Hey YouTube, how's it going? Mike the Manic Geek here, and I'm coming at you today with something that is finally not a case or fan review. <laughs> today I'm going to be taking a look at a Vexor's new Raiden series of memory modules. Now, this is the DDR3 kit that I acquired. This runs at uh, 2133 megahertz with uh, primary timings of 9, 11, 10, 27. This runs at 1.65 volts and has a lighting effect on it that's a bit different from what we're accustomed to seeing on the top of most uh, high-end luxury class memory modules in that it has a sort of plasma tube that creates a lightning effect that runs up and down the module. So I'm going to give a quick unboxing and overview of the product, uh, give you guys some of my impressions of build quality, uh, run a quick benchmark past you, and uh, give my overall thoughts on this, on this uh, set of memory and uh, whether or not it's something you guys should be considering for your next build. So we'll start off with the packaging here. Uh, it's a pretty nondescript box, just a very basic Avexor Raiden uh, graphic on the outside of it. Nothing really uh, overly extravagant, but the feel of the cardboard that they used on this box is really high quality. Um, even the packaging for the modules on the inside, when you flip up the tab opening it up, uh, it presents really cleanly and even gives you a diagram on the inside of the box that shows you what exactly is going on on the inside of these modules to allow this, uh, this lighting effect to exist in the first place. It is a pretty intricate looking circuit that they, that they set up to allow this uh, lighting to exist in the first place. And I imagine that's part of the reason why this kit has to run at 1.65 volts in order to not only achieve its clock speeds, but in order to power those plasma tubes on the top as well. Um, removing from the box uh, is pretty simple. They've got a pull tab on the side that lets you cleanly pull out all the modules. And they do all come pre-installed with plastic caps on the bottom of the contact points to sort of help prevent any undue oxidation uh, during storage and transport of the modules. Uh, once we get them out, we can see a really clean looking heat sink. Uh, pretty aggressive shape to it, but it's otherwise very clean looking with very smooth angular lines throughout. Uh, really nice in, in, uh, engraved uh, Avexor logo pressed into the side of the heat sink. But man, these things are tall. I mean, these are huge. They're easily double the height of a standard low profile memory dim and almost rival the height of OCZ's old Reaper series of memory modules, if you guys remember those from the earliest days of DDR3 memory. Not small kits. So keep that in mind when you're planning out your system around these, because you're going to have to have either some kind of low profile heat sink that just takes up the area of the socket itself, or use some form of water cooling kit like we've done in this system here. Uh, it is guaranteed to interfere with any other kind of heat sink that you install here. There is no way that you're going to get anything else to fit. That's, that's just the way it is. Um, also, forget about taking off these heat sinks to try and water cool the dims themselves. First of all, why would you do that to this memory in the first place? It kind of defeats the point of buying it. Secondly, even if you did want to do that, you'd have to do some soldering to, uh, to remove the plasma tube module from the top of these dims. So again, these, these are designed to, to sort of sit on their own. Um, but this heat sink and lighting configuration pulls up really the only point of concern that I have with these modules in that the, the heat sink that sits on top of them is not most, it's mostly not a heat sink. Uh, in fact, for the most part, it's plastic. Really, the only part of the module that has any sort of exposed metal to dissipate heat is near the very bottom of the modules. And as wide as these heat sinks are, along with being very tall, I have a hard time justifying wanting to do anything other than plug them in and run them at their specified clock speeds. I would not mess with overclocking these at all just because heat dissipation is already fairly poor on these modules to begin with. Um, and pushing things any further is probably not going to amount to a good time. Uh, but that being said, uh, let's talk about the performance on these modules. 
Uh, I went ahead and tested these against uh, my own system's Corsair Vengeance LP low voltage memory modules that I personally overclocked to 2133 megahertz to match the speed on these dims to see what sort of performance differential there is. And it, to first look at the, the test that I performed on MaxMem, you would think that the Corsair modules are pulling decently far ahead because of the read, write, and copy speed differences that you see between the modules, but it really boils down to latency on these Vexor DIMMs. These, are, these have extremely low latency on them, and it more than makes up the difference uh, in raw read, write, and copy speeds to the point that the difference between these, these modules is, is negligible. It's margin of error, frankly. So realistically speaking, this does stack up to some pretty good memory modules out there. So I really wouldn't worry about performance if you're looking for something that looks the part as well as performs the part as well. But really, the point of these modules is the Raiden lighting effect that they have on the top of them. It is freaking gorgeous. Um, it is blue, so it does go with the whole white, blue, and black color scheme of these dims. But it's not so blue that if you were trying to match it to different LED lighting on the inside of a case, that it wouldn't still look good. Um, it's, a very light, it's a very light shade of blue, to be fair. And even in this particular system right here, which does utilize an NZXT hue, changing through any of the different lighting colors just creates a different kind of dramatic lighting effect with these modules. Now, one thing I will say is that the lighting effect is designed to play off of other modules surrounding it. Um, sort of like the, the electric field that's generated by these plasma tubes up on the top here uh, plays off of the field from the other tubes. So it's more dramatic the more of these modules are installed. If you plan on splitting up something like a quad channel kit like this to run across two different systems, you will notice that the lighting effect is a little more subdued. And by a little, I mean a lot. It still looks good, but it looks better when all four dims are installed in a single system. Uh, but yeah, that's, I mean, that, that's pretty much the, uh, that's pretty much the crux of the matter here. It's solid performing memory. It looks good. I just question a plastic heatsink. Now, I, I get it. It's not really meant to be something that you're going to be overclocking with and really pushing much further than you already are. I, I understand that. But at least make it better quality plastic next time, Avexer. Um, the one thing that I, that I was a little disappointed with is the, the plastic, it feels, it honestly feels kind of cheap to hold. Uh, and even getting up close on some of the dims uh, where the plastic uh, separates from one half of the heat sink to the other, it doesn't always want to sit appropriately in place, and I find myself having to push the heat sink back together. Now, we're talking about less than a millimeter of travel here, but if you're purchasing modules like this, you're going to be paying a lot of attention to the system that they sit in, up to and including paying attention to the modules themselves. This isn't one of those three foot or five foot mods that you can get away with having uh, minor uh, issues in the detail and it being fine. This is something you're gonna wanna pay a lot of attention to. And if you're looking up close at a kit of memory that is expensive as this stuff gets, seeing little imperfections like that on the modules is a little disconcerting, at least it was for me. Now. It's not disconcerting to the point that I would assume this is a problem across all modules, but this is the experience that I had with the kit of memory that I acquired. So, you know, as always, your, your individual results may vary. I personally would like to see just slightly tighter quality control on these heat sinks to make sure that all the plastics are fitting together correctly. Um, but I mean, really, we're grasping at straws here at this point. A Vexer makes world-class memory it performs well, it looks good, and realistically, if you're looking for a lighting effect like this in your next home build or even a show build for, for something like a LAN gaming event or something, you're gonna be hard pressed to wanna consider anything apart 
from the Avexa Raiden series. It's, it's really strong memory, and I definitely give it a thumbs up on my end. So, guys, this has been Mike the Manic Geek. Uh, do that thumbs up, thumbs down thing like you do how you do. Uh, be sure to stick around. i got more videos coming down the pipeline. And as always, I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy.